So you're in the market to buy a house. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You decided to check out some open houses and talk to a couple agents and they start talking about things like closing costs and prepaids and title insurance. And you have no idea what they're talking about. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down these different terms and lay out how much it's actually going to cost you to buy a home. What's up YouTube, Tyler here, your Nebraska Realtor, and I'm gonna be sharing with you the cost to buying a home, and we're gonna be breaking this down in chronological order, or as you would be paying them when you're buying your home. To make this simpler, I'm gonna be using my own home as an example. You ready? Here we go. My home was listed for $320,000, and we agreed on a purchase price of $322,000. Once we agreed on the price, I needed to secure the offer with the agreed upon earnest deposit of $3,000. This is money that will come out of your pocket right away, typically within 48 hours of getting your offer accepted. The earnest deposit is security to the seller that you're serious about buying their home. And can I be honest, it, it makes them feel more comfortable about taking their home off the market as you both move towards executing on the terms you agreed to. Earnest money will then be applied to your down payment when you close on the house. However, if you decided not to buy the house and walked away, you could be at risk of losing that money altogether. Now, five days after we wrote the offer, we conducted the home inspection, which cost $350 to inspect the property and provide me with a written report and photos of everything they found. This cost will in most cases be paid at the time of the inspection, which is what we did. Just another note here, as a buyer, you're allowed to do as many inspections as you want at your own costs, and it could increase the total cost for purchasing a home, Keep that in mind as we go through some additional inspection items that maybe you should consider. We have the sewer inspection to make sure there's no tree roots in the sewer line, which costs $150. A radon test for $100 to make sure you don't need a mitigation system installed. And then termite test to make sure there are no termites, which can cost $75. And in some cases, it could be required by your bank already. Now, my recommendation is to start with the whole house inspection. See if they find anything, and then based on their recommendations, do any additional inspections. After we agreed on what the sellers were going to fix, I contacted the bank and ordered the appraisal for $450, which I paid at the bank at that time. I typically wait on ordering the appraisal till after we agree on the inspection terms because if the inspector, let's say, found a large crack in the foundation and I want to walk away from the deal, I don't want to be stuck with the cost of the appraisal and not buy the house. So once we agreed to it, I ordered the appraisal knowing that I'm not going to be walking away. Now at this point in the transaction, we're about 14 days in and I'm out of pocket $3,950. I did not have any additional cost in this purchase, and in most cases, you shouldn't either until the actual closing day, where you'll sign all the papers and hand over a cashier's check that will cover the remaining closing cost and down payment. So three days before closing, I was giving the closing disclosure that outlined every cost and credit in this transaction and is what you'll be signing when you close on your house. The disclosure details are broken into two major sections. First is loan cost. This totaled $2,154.75, and out of the total amount, I had a say in only two items that totaled $647.50. The first was the commitment fee for $400 to the lender. Now, many banks have multiple fees that you may wanna be aware of, such as the commitment fee, origination fee, and underwriting fee. These feeds pad the pocket of the lender and I would recommend comparing banks specifically on these fees and interest rates. As you can see, I only had the commitment fee, which was cheap. Then the escrow closing fee of $247.50 was charged by the title company. This number changes from company to company, 
but the rest of the fees, including the title insurance, are regulated. So when you're comparing title companies, you are specifically comparing the escrow closing fee if your state performs escrow closings. You can ask your realtor in your state to see if you have escrow closings. The remaining or the second major section falls under other costs. Here I had recording fees and transfer taxes of $158. This is the cost the city charges to record the deed and mortgage in my county, and you can expect similar charges there as well. In my case, the seller paid for the transfer tax of $724.50, which is common in my state. Then we have prepaids. Prepaids are exactly how they sound. Fees that are paid in full or in part prior to possession. So first we had a prepaid interest fee of 28 days, which came out at $946.56. We closed on July 3rd, giving us 28 days till the end of the month. Therefore, there was 28 days of interest that I had to pay up front since we weren't gonna be making a payment in the month of July. Next, there was the first year of homeowner's insurance for $1,966. You as the buyer can shop for the cheapest rate for your home, but then the full amount will be due at the closing for your first year of ownership. Then the last of our prepaids was taxes for the full year of $3,228.86. Since we were buying in the month of July, we had to cover the remaining months of taxes for the year while the seller color covered the months that he was there. Now this part can be a little confusing. Even though we paid prepaid taxes and insurance, we now have to start saving for when they're due again the following year. There's two ways that we go about this. First, we put an initial three month balance in our escrow account, which totaled $2,105.94 for taxes and insurance, which in our case was required by the bank. The remaining difference comes out of our monthly payment we make to the bank for our mortgage. Our monthly payment was $2,107.97 and out of that $701.98 is taken by the bank and put into an escrow account to save for the next year's taxes and insurance. The remaining balance of $1,405.99 is our principal and interest that we pay every month. Going back to the other cost section of our closing disclosure, for the remaining amount totaled at $588, of which 350 of it was from the home inspection that I asked the lender to include as part of the disclosure because I was planning on asking the seller to cover $8,000 of my closing costs. So let's review. The agreed purchase price was $322,000. My closing costs were at this point $11,148.11, but then I also got a credit from the bank for $55, which made it $11,093.11. In my negotiations, I asked the seller to pay $8,000 of my closing costs, which left me with the remaining amount of $3,093.11. Just a side note, I was willing to pay $2,000 more than what they were asking for if they would agree to give me $8,000 in closing costs because they just reduced the price of their house. I personally believe having more money in my pocket today is more valuable than paying a lower mortgage payment over the time that I'm gonna be living there. If instead I offered $8,000 less and bought the home for $314,000, that would have made my payment about $42 less per month, or I could have $8,000 in my pocket today. For me, it was a no brainer. If you've made it this far, it probably means this stuff is helpful. Would you do me a solid and subscribe or even hit the like button and give me a thumbs up? It would really help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, let me know what state you're in in the comments below. This will help me help more people like you when it comes to real estate. Let's talk about the down payment. Down payment is completely dependent on the type of loan that you get with the bank. Mostly, you're gonna see FHA loans for 3.5% or conventional loans for 5%. Originally, I was planning on a conventional loan that would require a down payment of $16,100. And since I would be putting less than 20% down, the bank would have tacked on an additional $176 a month in PMI insurance. 
Instead, I worked out a deal with the bank for 100% financing, where they covered the down payment in a second loan for dirt cheap, and I was able to remove the PMI insurance. So if you're doing a conventional loan with no seller closing costs, you could expect to pay about $27,193.11 to purchase a home around 122, excuse me, around $322,000. For homes around 200,000, you could expect your closing costs to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $7,000 and then a down payment that would be adjusted with your price would make your approximate total cost of $17,000. For my specific home, because I did 100% financing, I had a few more fees, but in the end, I had to write an additional check for $454.57, making the total out-of-pocket cost $4,404.57. Buying a home can seem simple enough until you really start looking at the numbers and trying to keep with your budget or maybe you're trying to keep your fees low as possible. This is where the help of a licensed realtor that knows what they're doing can really help you. If you live out of the state of Nebraska and would like to make sure you're with the realtor that can guide you through this process, DM me or email me and I can connect you with a trusted realtor in your area. If you're looking in Nebraska, give me a call. I would love to help you and navigate these waters and make it an experience you won't forget. You can find my contact information in the description below. Well, that is it guys. If you want more videos like these, put in the comments below what you would like to see or questions you have. I typically make videos based on the questions people are asking. So thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care.